Okay. This is Myron yeah, Dewey. I'd like to go around and find yeah, out who everybody is. I'll come over here and give you a hug because I can't keep it together. I mean, this is Jane Fonda. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, holy <laughs> shit. <laughs> I, I'm oh, old. It's, uh, it's Jane Fonda. <laughs> we are at Perry Nance Casino yeah, in 48 North Dakota. We're here with a group of other indigenous media folks. We got Myron Dewey, prolific the rapper, Sarah Eagleheart. Hi, Sarah. So I've been doing the the visual debunking everything that's going on around us and making a visual for us to articulate and also the legal narrative. You know what Nader means? Mm-hmm. She's awesome. She was with me. I took her in an action. I had to take her back to the action. I was with mercenaries out there, so I had to throw her in another vehicle. She was like, if you didn't want to go, but I was like, your sons would not forgive me if something was to happen. She's okay? Yeah, she's good. She was up here for a while. She was? Yeah. Tell her that I send my love. I knew. I she spent time with her yeah. on the Shoshone. Yeah. Reservation and everywhere. Yeah. It was when I saw her on the cover of Ramparts, and she had her. This was 1970, and she had her fist in the air, mm -hmm. and behind her on a red wall it said, "Better red than dead." Mm -hmm. <laughs> and she was at Alcatraz, so I went to Alcatraz, and that's where I met her. Yeah, yeah, she's one of uh, the elders that I go to for guidance and help. So I go stay with her, and you know, we're a Paiute Shoshone. No. Yeah. I've been there. Yeah, she stayed with me up here. Really? Yeah. I'm tough, and the teepees she brought me were the teepees that were destroyed and urinated on from the Warren County Police Department up at the treaty camp up on top. So we had set the media tent up immediately, independent media. Independent media is really to help our native media crew right. with anything that they need as much as possible. Yeah. Her and son was just a little boy. Well, she came to stay with me. Yeah. And he came up here. Yeah? Well, not Devin. Um, her older one. Yeah. And you are? I'm Selena uh, Manson. And I'm uh, working with Digital Smoke Signals and assisting them. And just created my own media outlet called Sacred Movement. And just as an overflow of just being here and so much, um, so many people wanting to know what was going on. Right. Kind of found fell into the. I've always been social media on activism. Mm -hmm. so I'm interested in the so it's methodologies and Native American studies, and um, so I've always done activism through social media. media and cool. This has just been a giant and platform to really get them. Where are you from? I'm from Santa Barbara, California. Oh. Yeah, my family's from Mexico. Okay. My ancestors. Because that's where the Chumash were. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. 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 I know the Chumash down there. They have a sacred site down there in uh, Malibu. If you ever want to check it out down there, they take care of some land there and they have a whole uh, Chumash village right on the beach. But it's, it's kind of secret, you can't really see it so much. Well, so if you ever want to see it, go down that way. So, and you are? I'm, my name is Darren Thompson. Hi. I'm from uh, Lac to Flambeau, Wisconsin. I'm streaming live for a publication called Powas.com. <laughs> Been up here several times, shared a lot of Myron's footage um, with many thousands and thousands of people about basically um, what's going on, telling the narrative of what's going on here. So, um, yeah, so. Good. Yeah. And? Sean Turgeon. I'm a Mexican, Lakota, and white. I remember the Rosewood Sioux tribe in uh, New York City. I'm just here to help Myron the beautiful smoke signals. Uh -huh. Thank you, music. Whatever. Yeah. <laughs> Renaissance man. Who else? Hello, hi. hi. I'm Stacy Thunder. This is my daughter, Savannah. Hi. She's 16. Um, and we're with Indigenous with Stacy Thunder. I have a video series. I um, host television for 12 years. Uh -huh. And um, we're also here with Indian Country and Today Media Network. So both Ojibwe. She's also Navajo um, from Minnesota and Wisconsin. Cool. I'm Stacy Huff. I'm born in Seneca, raised in Mohawk. I'm from Boston, Boston. Um, I've been here since August. I live here. I'm one of three hooded old chonies that live here now. I support Fourth Grade Warrior and High Star Camp. Mm -hmm. We do a lot of donations coming in to, to feed and help out the individual camps that are within. Because mm -hmm. like now that we're 
in the, to the end of like the winter rising, you got people that yeah. So and then you work on either wood stoves, cooking heaters. Mm -hmm. There's still a lot of people in tents. Mm -hmm. yeah. mm -hmm. Good for you. And today I'll be representing the Warrior Media. Which media? Red Warrior. Red Warrior Media. Good for you. Hi. Hi. Nice what media you. do you? My name is Wapakowit. Uh, I mean, Killer of Human Beings, Eater of Souls. I'm the matriarch of the head of my house, uh, the House of Thunder and Lightning, from the Channel and Coast Salish people. I represent myself. I'm an independent media maker. Um, I work with West Coast Women Warriors, Media Cooperative, Ancestral Pride, and I also do Red Warrior Camp Media. Who else? Who have I not? Yes. Hi. Hi. I'm Sarah Eagleheart. Um, I'm the CEO of Native Americans and Philanthropy. So we've been here since August supporting the tribe and getting information out to the foundation mm -hmm. and to the sector. You work with uh, Rebecca Adams? She's First Nations? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. She's one of the extended groups that work mm -hmm. with the philanthropy sector. Right. Right. And my son, Brendan. Brendan, hi. Yeah, he, um, hi. He came to see why doesn't everybody sit down? <laughs> Why doesn't everybody sit down? Come on, Francis. <laughs> I mean, we're going to be here for a while, right? No matter what. Yeah. They were trying to tell us to make room for everyone to be here, but whatever. Yeah, chairs are good. Huh? Whatever. Should we sit slide down. some more chairs over? Sure. Whenever slide possible, I sit down. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So I heard the coverage last night with CBS from Bismarck was pretty good. I didn't see it. I was asleep by then. Yeah, I didn't get a chance to see it either. But it was positive. Yeah. Really? You did? Yeah, they interviewed me. Of course it was positive. Oh, yeah. good. They've never been out here before. H HLN did a morning feature on the morning report. That was excellent. It was I saw it? that. Yeah. Good. The one with Robin Mead, but it was her, her filler. She's probably off, but it was awesome. Good. Yeah. Good, good, good. Get the word out. They just threw me in. Well, hi. hi. <laughs> We're old pals. <laughs> Why don't you ask Jane if she's okay with us being here? He's trying to take us out. Yeah. He's saying we didn't have clearance to be in here. I, I, I'm not in charge. I'm not in charge. Yeah, I mean, do you mind if my 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 leader media? is Lahey, and he tells me what to do. So, so the clearance was for in a country. It's just a smoke signals. Tell us dot com. What about frontline media? What about the people within the camp? We're the yeah. frontline media. We're the ones that live there and actually do this. I, I'm not the one to say. Oh no, I'm just saying. Okay, it that's seems all right. Pretty exclusionary Thanks. to exclude independent frontline media from. We're not excluding. We're not excluding. We had a list. We compiled yeah. a list. But well, people, people showed up on my list. I'd be like, hell yeah, I'm actually this is a good opportunity for you. I mean, you want to be aware of this? This is another time of So if you guys want to be involved, no, I'm fine. I'm fine. This is part of the segregation and division. No, no, no. I'm saying, I'm saying, if you want to be involved, it happens in any press conference. These are good guys. Oh, they are the good guys. Okay. I think, well, I, think, I, think I think it's important for one of you guys to be here, both of you guys, if you would. So I'd like you guys to be here. Yeah. I know you guys. I'm so sorry, I apologize about that. Responda? Um, yeah, um, Jane. Jane. Yeah. Jane. Oh. So, how has it happened? Is there someone from the frontline media? Yes, they're going to be in here in a okay. second. Okay. Okay. Um, he's going to. He has the questions compiled. He'll be asking the questions. Okay. Um, you got that. You got that. We'll just wait for them a couple minutes, but it's just essentially speak from the heart. I'm not going to corner you into saying something you'll regret later. So, just kidding. That's okay. Yeah. People try that all the time. We're used to it. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, like Apple. I just want to sit where I can get a good feel. Yeah, sure. Yeah, she's a bit excited. I got to meet her. She talked about you a lot. That's really nice. She had a big impact on me. Yeah, she's still, you know, and she's still doing the work through us as well. So that really helps now. Jessica, what do you call it? Jessica, her daughter. 
So you can testify. I've been involved in Indian country since oh, yeah. 1970. Yeah, I've been in, you know, we went out to Pyramid Lake where you guys were out there. Pyramid right? Lake, yes. Yeah, out there at the ranch. And with Gus. We were fighting out there with the kebabis. Well, this is very moving to me, I will have to tell you. Because, as we just said, I've been in, involved in Indian country since 1970. And back then, and I traveled to a lot of the reservations all over the country, and things were not well organized then. Um, and what I see here is so different. People really have each other's backs. People are organized. The fact that you all are here, the fact that there is indigenous media like this from all over the country, is so new and so important. The fact that there's a youth council, the fact that everything that I've seen, people helping each other, people having a media hill, people, you know, there's a, there's an organization and that didn't used to be the case. So I congratulate all of the tribes for doing what they're doing here. This is historic, everyone coming together this way. And in spite of what we hear outside of the camp and outside of Standing Rock, what I feel when I'm in camp is, is unity and people caring for each other, providing food for each other, providing wood for each other, and heat. Now they're starting this amazing school which I would like to be part of in the future, because I'm going to be back. But this is really a tale of two cities, the situation here. I'll start with the positive part of it, is Native people who have, from the very beginning, from way before I was born, have been telling white people what needs to happen if we're going to survive that we are one with the earth, with the water, with things that grow, and that if we don't respect that and live in harmony with nature and respecting nature, that we can't survive. And yesterday I was very uh, moved when the elder that made, that made the prayer at the, at the luncheon of thanks, remind me his name, Leah? Jay Taken Alive. Jay Taken Alive. Jay Taken Alive. And he said, when you pray, lift your palms up to the stars because we come from the stars. And, you know, I realize that has now been proven by science. We are all made up of molecules from the stars. And quantum physics shows that we are all one, we are just waves of energy. And it moved me so much because the Native people have known that from the beginning. They didn't need science to tell them that. And it's to our detriment that we didn't pay attention. And we're at a situation now where it's almost too late. We've done so much damage. You know, Sitting Bull said the love of possession is a disease with them. And that's what we're seeing here. The love of possession is a disease with them, which means greed. And that's what the pipeline represents, greed. We don't need fossil fuel. We have wind, we have sun. In fact, that green energy is less expensive and it pr provides more jobs than fossil fuel industries do. And so this is the direction that we have to go in and this is what the people that are gathered here, standing with Standing Rock, are saying in a prayerful way, pipelines and oils that can desecrate sacred land and spoil our water will be the end of humanity. Not just Native Americans, not just the people who, who live here, but everyone. And that we have to understand, we have to finally, we Europeans, wake up to the message that you have been telling us for centuries and centuries, because we're almost at a tipping point. Once we pass the tipping point, there's no going back. 
One of the reasons that I'm so moved and happy that I've been here is that it's a message of hope, especially from the young people. And you do feel that the ancestors are here. You feel that Sitting Bull is here. Yesterday during the prayer, I saw the presence and my friend with the, with the, um, with the youth council, Leha Spoon Hunter, um, he showed me a photograph that was taken, I believe, in early October when the youth went down to the front line as a group, peacefully, in prayer, and photographs were taken. And in the black sky above them were these orbs of light. And I saw them and I knew what they were because I've seen them in other photographs before. In other sacred places, like in Ireland, and those orbs are spirits, and they go to people who need help and support, and that was so moving, and I know that it's true. And I wanted to come here now, and I wish I could stay longer, but I'll be back.